Tony, not long now before the World Cup. How are you feeling? Overexcited. <laughs> Been waiting a long time for this moment, preparing a long time, and, and this is what it's about. Big moments, big tournaments. What are the discussions with the girls leading up to a World Cup? Because we all know how big a World Cup is. You've been involved in World Cups. But what it means to play at a World Cup in your own country. Mm -hmm. I mean, having the privilege to play on home soil in a massive tournament like this is one in a lifetime opportunity. You can prep tactics, you can be fit, firing physically. Um, you can have all the plans in the world. But the number one thing is to be ready mentally for what's coming uh, and embrace that feeling. And, People could call it as, you know, expectation or pressure, but we will look at it as more, we feel the belief and the support. And then all of a sudden you feel you can get carried and lifted up in a home World Cup instead of maybe feeling like, oh, this is a lot of pressure to carry. So we feel excitement. How's that journey been for you as a manager, leading this Matilda's side? Um, it's a massive job for you personally as well. So it's really one of the biggest jobs in your career as a manager. How has that journey been for you? And how do you feel the journey's been with this team? How have they evolved? I think it's been one of those journeys where I, I really threw the player into deep water early because uh, we have a very, very clear idea that we need to build depth. We need to build from bottom and up and play top ranked opposition. I was presented a document when I took this job that the statistic against top ranked European opposition was really bad and also that we never gone through a, a quarter final in a major tournament. So we said we need to do something different. We need to invest in playing the top rank the positions, but also at the same time build depth. You know how difficult that can be. We looked at almost 60 players, we have almost 20 debutants, and at the same time the toughest schedule ever in the history of this program. That means we lost a lot of games. And the players were really challenged, but I'm so thankful for the belief in the process that the players have shown. And at the end of this development process, we're also now starting to see improvement in performance that also leads to better results. How have you managed that expectation? You talk about you've lost a lot of games. There's been a lot of criticism. People have struggled to find the system, the direction. How have you kept them positive? How have you kept the girls on path? I think I did a good job internally to explain the process and the fact that I had experience doing the exact same thing with the US team back in 2017 when we rebuilt and the result wasn't really there and then we managed to win the World Cup in 2019 with the US team. I think that experience have helped but I don't think I did a good job communicating externally. So there were lack of understanding what's happening here now, why are they doing this? And I've tried the last six months to be better at communicating what we've done, why we do it. And I also think obviously the performance and the result have helped people maybe see why we've done it. How has managing the Matildas changed you as a manager? Has it changed you at all? I think it, every coaching job you have, you you learn, I would never change my core values and who I am. And I think that's one of the number one rules for a coach is be true and authentic to who you are. But then you develop and you grow. And this team have definitely helped me grow. Uh, not just as a coach, but as a human being. All the people that I've had the privilege to work with now, both staff and players, have helped me become a better person. What are the strengths of this Matilda side? Attack. <laughs> We have a lot of attacking threats uh, and also the field is football. The other thing we have is we're fast. We're really, really fast. We're flying when we're playing. Someone looked at some stats. I think we have one of the fastest team in the world. So, we're, you know, the pace and how we play our pressing game is definitely a strength of ours. But it's got to be controlled, right? Because home nation on the front foot, teams are going to, I mean, you're, you're the, the prize to, to knock off, to knock out of the tournament. True. But I also think we're a little bit of a nightmare opposition for a lot of uh, teams, especially the top teams, when they know that they're going to have the favoritism in terms of ranking and you know the top ranked teams. If you, if you look at Canada in our group, they should win the game. They won the Olympics, they're top ranked, they should win against us. The expectation in Canada is that Canada should beat Australia. If you go through the group and come into the group stage and you look at the teams that have in our bracket, like an England or a France or a German on that side, they're going to be the favorites. And then you play Australia and they know what we can do. I think we can be a nightmare opposition for a lot of teams. Well, I have to ask you a question about the goalkeeper, Mackenzie yeah. Arnold. She mm -hmm. played, a, she had an unbelievable tournament in the Cup of Nations. Um, where are you with the goalkeeper position? Have you, in your head, decided, or have you got an idea of who will be the number one come the World Cup? I know it's still a little bit away, but mm -hmm. not too far. 
Well, no coincidence that you asked the goalkeeper question, right? <laughs> you know how important it is. Of course. Uh, first of all, what a moment. Uh, I watch it back and see it. You know, I got emotional the other day when I watched it before this <laughs> interview as well. So it's a privilege to sit here next to you. If you can get a moment like that with this team as well, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if you look at the goalkeeper situation, I think Maka represents something that is very unique with this team. She has been in a very, very tough situation for a long time, getting minimum playing time, playing good in club land, coming in and still not maybe get the amount of opportunity that she would have wanted. But she's been a true professional every single day. She's been encouraging to the other goalkeepers, true teammate, the best you can imagine. And then when she was given the opportunity, she grabbed it. She was amazing in that tournament. And that means she's sending messages to me that I want that spot. But so does Lydia and so does Tegan. And right now there's still an opening and it's a fight and we're a little bit too far out to say this is going to be the number one. But you also know from experience, it's important also when you're going to a major tournament that the goalkeeper feel a trust and feel that, you know, I might be the number one and feel that. Um, but we're a little bit too early to, to decide that now, but she has definitely sent messages. So what have, you, what have you told the girls now leading up to this World Cup? Like you said, it's a little bit too far away to be, be nailing people down to certain positions. What, what are those conversations like? What, are you, what, are you, what messages are you sending to them? I think, first of all, it's connecting to our common why. Why are we doing this? Why are we here? And it's so much bigger than just 90 minute football. This is a legacy 23 and beyond when 90 minute football is a smaller part of a, a bigger meme, you know? And I'm just a small part of it as well. I'm paid to make some uncomfortable decisions uh, and I'm also paid to try to make them before I know if it's right or wrong. Afterwards, we can only say, why didn't she play? Or why didn't you sub her in earlier? Or why did you do that tactical change? Well, when we do those decisions as a coach, you do it before you know if it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what we're paid for. What I love with this team though, is that there's an understanding that it takes 23 to perform in 23, meaning the World Cup 23, it takes all of them. And we've been very clear on not being a team that just rely on a starting 11. We are very keen on making sure we have a strong finishing 11 and we don't even call our players subs, we call them game changers because they play the game from the bench and they are the one that's going to change the game, whether it's to close out a win or going for a goal or keeping the momentum with energy. And look at the Tournament of Nation when we won that and lift that trophy, we won every game from the game changers and that makes them feel maybe if you, hey, you're not starting today, but be ready, play. Then I think the acceptance is a little bit better because they feel important even if they're not starting. Have you noticed that from the Lionesses, Serena Wigman said to her players, every player knew exactly where the position was leading up to the tournament and therefore very much they had their game changes as well. Yep. Is, is that something you already had in your mind? Is it something you picked up maybe from there as well? or? No, there's something I've been working on for actually a long time is to make sure it's crystal clear for players what the role is. Um, the one thing that the Lioness has showed once again, you can see on the men's side and the women's side, there's some clear stats on that and some research out there as well, that continuity in a starting lineup and player availability, meaning not injured players, equals success in big tournaments. And the Lioness has had the same starting lineup in every single game and the same game championship subs and no injuries, no COVID cases, well, except Serena, which is yep. good that she was healthy after that. But in terms of players, they had the most player availability and the most consistency in the tournament, and they won. And that's proven both on the men's and women's side in previous tournament as well. So we know to invest in a sports medicine and sports science group that makes sure that the players are available and fit so we can have consistency is one of the number one success factors. Did you ever think being in the game for that long and women's football being involved for a long period of time, that you'd have an opening game of a World Cup, get moved from a 40,000 seater to an 80,000? If you would have asked me that question in 2012 when I had my first job in the women's game, maybe not, but when you ask me now, yes. And I think it's very important that we pay the respect to the past. Why are we able to do that? There's people way before me that have paid this path. And when we represent, we represent the past, all the alumni Matildas, all the player now that's been here for a decade or two, the current players, but also we are inspiring the next generation to get the past, the present and the future to do this together in the World Cup. It's going to be massive. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more. So why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.